Hi, Patrick Lynch from the Free Truth Show on these changing times radio.ming.com. Soon to be broadcasting again live. Soon. Soon. Um, the Olympic ceremony, I just want to go over it. What a farce, what a joke. It's all satanic, kind of Luciferian Illuminati symbolism all over the place. The first uh, opening ceremony, the, the opening ceremony was um, satanic, uh, kind of uh, Harry Potter type Grim Reaper figures with black uh, cloak and garb. Um, with a magic wand presiding over uh, little children on NHS hospital beds. Um, lots of flashes of pyramids and all seeing eyes, never mind the pyramids all around the stadium. And uh, thanks for not doing a false flag yet so far. Nice one. Um, and the closing ceremony, uh, where it passes on to Brazil. Some very interesting pictures. I wish I could show them here, but I can't. But look it up, you'll see. Well, well, we've got the extinguishing of the flame with music from uh, Dances with Wolves. Uh, as we know, Dances with Wolves is uh, about the genocide of a whole race of people in America. Okay? Anyway, I thought that was just an odd tune to have while you're extinguishing the flame, the Olympic flame. Anyway, um, lots of, uh, lots of newspaper clippings of Shakespeare. Everything had Shakespeare all over it. Um, also, there was um, to be or not to be was the main kind of newspaper clipping you could see. To be or not to be. Now, be aware, <laughs> no pun intended, but be, uh, to be or not to be, it's a kind of Masonic joke. Um, the beehive mentality. The beehive is a very important symbol for a Freemason, for example. Uh, why is it on the... Um, why is it, it is on the American passport, for example? Anyway, just randomly, um, not randomly, because the beehive is an important symbol, in, a bit like this one. Um, it's an important symbol in Freemasonry because the hive mentality, uh, we're the worker bees, and there's a queen at the top, and um, which queen, we don't know. But generally, there's a kind of Borg-like hierarchy going on here, matriarchy, if you like. And the beehive is a very important um, allegory for describing how the herd is to be managed, as it is, if you like. The cattle. Anyway, I digress. Uh, another one is, the rest is silence. That's a bit strange. Uh, read all about it, that song. That's that, the only lifting thing about the whole thing, apart from Roger Daltrey's performance, which I thought was top class. He's still got it. Um, was We're wonderful people... Uh, so when did we all get so fearful? That was interesting. Uh, now we're finally um, finding our voices. So read all about it. Thank you to the lady who sang that song. And uh, she seemed um, quite impassioned about that. Like she was really trying to get a message across under, under, under the nose of the Illuminati or something. It was interesting. But what is on here about... Um, again, on, not pun intended. Three. Then you had these guys and girls building these this pyramid. It was kind of an uncapped pyramid at the end of 303 white boxes. Now please go and look at this. I'll put them. I'll put the link on. Anyway, just have a look at these white boxes. Go to the Mail Online now, and you'll see pictures of the whole thing. But keep scrolling down, and you'll see the phoenix coming out of the the, the cauldron, if you like. The phoenix from the flames and everything, you know, it's all very symbolistic. But 303 white boxes carried in uh, to running up that hill by Kate Bush. And apparently the 303 um, number is the choice, uh, the amount of events that was going on. Um, 303 events throughout the, the whole Olympics. Um, big white pyramid, basically built from 303 white boxes. Very strange. And the women laying prostrate in front of the in front of the, lying down face down i think it was prostrate in front of this pyramid that's yet to be capped white boxes uh, george michael came on uh, wearing what appeared to be either a kind of a skull or an alien uh, design on his belt buckle uh, he's just in black uh, one of the headlines that was laid out was uh, Martians sends mes Martian sends message home. <laughs> uh, and then Russell Brand singing the Beatles. That was just 
gross. Um, as I say, um, and the Queen, Queen formed and uh, had Freddie Mercury singing. I still find that odd and a bit morbid. Okay, it's Freddie Mercury and there's a lot of fans and this is how we do it. And, but his friends were there playing with him and he's dead. You know, it's just, call me old fashioned, but I think that, still think that's weird. No use to that. I was very disappointed Muse decided to play at the Olympics, which they know, they will know, judging on their they will not control us tune, or <laughs> maybe they are controlled tune. Um, uh, they know the Illuminati agenda, they know what's going on, they know what they're singing about, why did they sing at the Olympics, Muse, come on. I've seen them live, it was one of the best amazing experiences of my life. It was like watching Queen live, but better, and I think you let yourself down there, guys. But keep on, keep on trucking, and keeping, just getting the, getting the word out there, and just being an inspiration to people. Otherwise, don't do that sort of nonsense again. I mean, Fat Boy Slim, uh, rocking the whole place with <laughs> two CD players, basically, twiddling buttons. Uh, that's a bit sad. Uh, the national anthem of Greece. I know it's played because it goes back to Greece three thousand years, the whole ceremony. But um, in the state that the bankers have put Greece in. Uh, to play their national anthem as part of some Illuminati ritual is still a bit of a piss take to me. God bless Greece and I hope you pull yourselves out of that mire that the bankers have put you in. Stop, just grow your own food and look after each other. And, uh, we're not far behind you. Ireland screwed already. So, um, and the red phoenix rising out of the flames, the cauldron, it's all very strange. You'll see that. Um, and that's about it really, uh, I mean, the funniest bit was uh, Posh Spice, I've never referred to it before, so that, uh, Victoria Beckham nearly falling off the car when she was addressing the crowd, because the car moved off and she was sitting on top of the taxi, on top of the taxi, that was quite amusing. Um, uh, yeah, and there's an Olympic anthem, first I've heard of it, there's an Olympic anthem? I was desperately trying to listen to this Welsh choir singing the, the words. It was something about brotherhood. I'm sure I heard something about brotherhood. Mm. The brotherhood of man, eh? Then they had John Lennon, another dead man, singing on a, on a screen, you know. Imagine. Yeah, that was a kind of a remix or something. Of, but you look at the lyrics of that. Uh, the brotherhood of man, uh, no religion to... You know, no religion, it's the future, world peace, when everyone's depopulated, which he spoke about a lot, that's probably why he was assassinated, executed. Um, you know, and a brotherhood of man, so again, you have to look at um, Sir Paul McCartney's mate a bit, you know, so. But, uh, they, I mean, it's not unusual, it doesn't mean John Lennon was on board, it doesn't make him any less of a songwriter, um, if he did write the song. And, um, you know, because the European Union, they use Beethoven's Ode to Joy, Ninth Symphony. So, and Beethoven was not a Mason. Beethoven fought the establishment, struggled a lot against the establishment, vilified, still came out on top as the best uh, composer on the planet ever, still to this day. But they use his music, that uh, eternal kind of real brotherhood of man kind uh, a very uh, godly man who loved truth and abhorred tyranny they'll still use Beethoven's ninth as the European anthem it's not the European anthem it's Beethoven's ninth all right it's for everybody <sighs> it's like having Hitler using the ninth as an anthem so that that's it race um, basically um thanks for not thanks for not causing any destruction during the olympics so far now we have the paralympics so um i think they've chosen to disturb the olympics at the most opportune time on the closing ceremony i'm very 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 relieved given the history of the false flag attacks in this country and abroad um, I'm very relieved that it's over I was going to leave the country and just in case it was some kind of fallout you know but I decided, decided to stay here and 
protect my family from any kind of pandemic or false fake false flag pandemic or whatever uh, shoving people into community centers um, forced inoculations or something like that I thought I'd stick around just to be there for that but I'm glad I did um, but now it's two more weeks to go of uh, slight anxiety because um, I'm very surprised very surprised that a false flag attack hasn't occurred at the Olympics the one thing in 2012 and by the way 2013 is the Illuminati's most important year in my view because they're always ahead one year in their calendar their calendar they're one year ahead so um, that's why 9-11 happened at the start of their millennium in 2001 see so 2013 is probably when the real stuff is going to happen but um, I'm very relieved very happy that no one's been hurt throughout the whole Olympics so for some reason the bankers have decided not to exploit this world event so were, were all the military there for to um, get us used to military being on the streets you know and heavier laws more security was that all prepping the public getting them used to it acclimatizing them that's the word so um i guess we're going to be pretty acclimatized after this you know if we allowed this to go on with the rapier missiles and uh, big ships on the thames and thousands and thousands of army even foreign troops uh, parading around uh, checking people patting them down um we haven't heard much about how the military were treating the public actually but the police were pulling people off walls and arresting them and detaining them for eight hours for not smiling when those were going past seriously he had um he had some kind of facial uh, fault like muscular dystrophy or something and he couldn't smile and they thought that was suspicious and that it was unmutual so pc shiny buttons is alive and well uh, welcome to England, where if you drop ten pounds on the floor, <laughs> they uh, fine you for littering, which is forty pounds. And if uh, if um, it's, these are real stories, uh, and, a, and and a thread from a woman's glove that she wasn't aware of that had come loose from her glove, she was fined for littering. Guy pulls up at a traffic light, puts his handbrake on, lights a cigarette. He's not in control of his vehicle. Bosh! It's nuts over here. Everyone's all the different services and departments and regulators are just falling over each other to, uh, you know, outdo each other, out, out jobs worth each other, out Jeff each other. It's, it's very strange, you know. So uh, keep smiling, you know, for fear you might get pulled off the wall. For some mm, that was a very strange thing. Apparently he was next to some protesters but they didn't say what the protesters were or how many of the other protesters were or what they were protesting about they just make it up it seems because uh, police have been known to lie yeah to be honest with you um all the dealings i've had with the police have been absolutely fine they've never been over the top with me when they've arrested me or uh, and it's been happened quite a few times uh, they've never been over the top with me, they've always been perfectly kind and nice people and it's just the bad ones at the top we need to uh, get out and get rid of because they're lying about people and uh, very corrupt, it's just the corrupt ones we need to weed out actually so I, thanks to the police for being nice most of the time but uh, you need to arrest your colleagues now any any opportunity especially uh, over the chemtrails because um somebody at the raf base there at the raf base is not doing their job and is grossly negligent the real terrorists are, are spraying us from the air for the last 15 years and no one's arresting them so <laughs> there's your next job anyway um that's it we got through the olympics for now it's the paralympics now i can't see them exploiting that not enough people watching no JFK kind of trauma there see alright um, so I'll be broadcasting again soon and thanks for watching this um, extremely lengthy and probably boring rant 
uh, not that I like the word rant. If you look it up, it's um, not a positive origin of the word rant. So, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for listening. And I just want to share my thoughts about you. Don't have to spread the video around. I'm just saying hello to everybody and um, keeping it real. Right. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was that I was born the same day as Simon Pegg. Um, so. 14th of February 1970, he was born in Norfolk, I was born in Brighton, and just wanted to let you know, um, an official message to Simon Pegg, um, you stole my life, that should be me up there.